Hey everyone, it's Alan over at Cobblers Plus, and in today's video, as you saw, we're going to be working on these Johnson & Murphy double zip boots that were actually made in Italy. We've got two pairs of them, one in a light color, one in a dark color, um, but these are going to be definitely interesting because there's a lot of things in the shoe communities that people talk a little down on about Johnson & Murphy, but these are some of those models that are not very common or very popular that people see so we're going to tear them down and see what's going on inside of them and see just how the italians made the johnson murphy so come join us check it out All right, again, everyone, thank you for joining us. So, I mean, at this point, we're just gonna kind of go through and break it down. A lot of the Johnson Murphys, I will point out, um, these days are either Blake stitched or not even stitched at all and have fake stitching and everything. Uh, from the look of it, this one does seem to be a Goodyear welted model. We just, well, actually, no, it looks like it might even actually be imitation. Dang it. I was hoping these would be a good one here, but you can see down in there that split right there there's no stitching or anything that welt looks like it's just decorative there um construction wise let's double check real quick because sometimes these things will fool us even i've seen johnson murphy's that are good your welted construction as well and all that good stuff but this one it's not even blake stitch it's just glued on all around that's a shame but we are gonna do whatever we can to make sure that these are as upgraded as possible so we're gonna start out by breaking them down let's tear these down and kind of i'll just fast forward through the whole process um i mean we'll see what's inside everyone so as you can see let's see if i can try to get my camera over here a little bit closer for you guys actually so as you saw i just pulled this off you can see there's the stitching still all intact there's a little fancy knot there and everything so these were just glued on fake stitches horrible fake stitches you can still see those there i'll show you so look at that stitches there there, no stitches were taken apart. That's all coming unglued. So I'm actually going to have to pull that back to re-glue it all and everything. Now you guys can see some of this right here. This is from the uh, uh, the solution that I used to deactivate the adhesives and everything. It's not going to cause any permanent irreparable damage to the leather. Don't worry, I still have to use the same stuff technically to clean up the whole upper and all that. We're going to have to do a little bit of treatment on it anyways. So a lot of that's going to get taken care of. I'll probably actually even put them in the bath for, for a little bit tonight so they get uh, cleaned up so that will all get taken care of. But 
we got this horrible looking foam stuff and everything uh, man, we're gonna clean all that out and make sure that we get some cork in there at least because we have to fill in that crevice obviously and uh, get it all back to being pretty so uh, gross gross and it's not gross i mean a lot of shoes are built that way but it's just it's upsetting originally i thought maybe maybe these might be the ones that i would think that were in better shape as far as construction and everything but now you can see here i'll show you guys better close up i need something to point with we'll use this to point with so hopefully that that works so got my little stitching all so this is kind of the base here there's that fiberboard cardboard type of base that's the footbed here right there's this harder cardboard that holds the shank which is intact i did press down to check otherwise it'd be a pain just tearing it all apart and stuff um so here's the leather upper at least a part of it right there that's where it gets tucked in that's this whole upper right here it just gets tucked down under and then you've got this uh kind of midsole slash welt thing that's there for additional structural support i guess you can say a little bit of thickness heft to the boots and uh you know that kind of decorative finish there with that uh welt there unfortunately it is just decorative there um now you can see a bunch of these nails here and they're kind of scattered random i mean you got your outer edge five on the perimeter which is great then you got these little ones here in the center there's six there and there's a seventh one right there in the center which is kind of ridiculous so um yeah they really made these look like a you know a well-built well-constructed boot but in reality these things are just all glued on and cemented and yeah that's not fun so i am gonna have to make sure i pull out this insole so there's a difference if if you're ever wondering there's technically a difference between an insole and a footbed um and it's very challenging to tell you guys the difference so these are insoles right here these are removable majority of the time or they're just very lightly glued in i'll probably have to throw these in the bath for him too because they're kind of ra raunchy looking but this right here is the foot bed actually it's kind of that the section of the shoe or boot that the rest of the shoe or boot is built off of that's that cardboard right there you can see it internally here some brands of shoes will actually not have a insole like this here they'll have a straight foot bed they may have like a little small insole pad right at the back of the heel right here just to cover up the nails and so it just comes down to here most western boots are like that uh, a lot of work boots that are good your welted construction are like that or they may have a three-quarter length one that just goes down to here at about the ball of the foot so from the back of the heel to the ball of the foot that's an insole there too um or like in this case they have a full length insole that's that's just kind of in rough rough shape i almost wonder looks like a little bit of mold or something we have to make sure make sure to treat these as such good thing we're going to give these a bath because if these have mold in them we definitely want to kill all that off but for now i'm going to go ahead and remove these nails break these other ones down and then take them to the bath oh and if you're wondering about these little green tags these are how we track everything the master ticket i'm not showing on video because it has the person's name and contact information but these don't have any of that info on there i wrote on their make video and all that kind of stuff but it's the ticket number that's under the last digit of the phone number full souls vibram 700 brown the date and all that kind of stuff so you know it's uh the man he dropped these off uh, probably yeah so they dropped them off there and they're a call when ready so i think overall as far as timing wise we should have them done in a good time for him, but he did request a video, so it's going to be a little more time-consuming uh, to work on these. Man, where's my little pad? I lost that. So hopefully we'll get through them in a good timely fashion, get them done and out the door fast, because it's been a little chaotic here. Where is my pad? Little rubber pad. I always lose it. But anyways, let me go ahead and break the rest of them down, get all these nails out of here, and pull out that... Not, damn it, I want to say cork, but it's not cork. It's foam 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 everywhere foam all the time i don't like foam foam is bad foam might feel bad uh, good at first but long term bad very very bad ah sweet dang it i thought i had it there all right let me just keep going and i'll see you back here in just a little bit actually i'll let you guys see what the baths look like they're really cool we got different types of setups and stuff for our bath systems so we'll see you back in a few 
All right, everyone. So I've got these in the bath here right now. You can see that water's starting to get a little bit on the browner side. Usually it's got a little bit of a yellow tint like that, not too much, but as you can tell, these are starting to get cleaned up. Got to add a little more liquid to here. You can see it's kind of sticking out just a little too much. There's the darker pair, same thing. I just put these in too. So definitely have to put a little bit more. You can see the difference between this batch here and this one here, it's still fairly clear. I just had to get these ones in first really quickly. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of our bath set up there and got bigger ones down there. Got some more up here and everything. And uh, we just kind of cycle them out and everything and work through it. So I'm gonna leave these in for a quite a while um i'll keep an eye on it to see how it goes either a couple of hours or overnight but i think i'm gonna leave them overnight so that they can get thoroughly cleaned and then i'll put them up on the drying rack so we'll see you back later all right everyone so i've got this uh filled in with the cork right there and uh we sanded everything out obviously because this is just a decorative uh welt stitching that they have up top here it doesn't make too much difference if we ended up accidentally nicking the stitches as you can tell it looks a little funky the adhesive is going to hold it in place structurally it has no no structural purpose whatsoever so just because it got a little sanded up it's not a big issue now if it was structurally uh, useful or had any practical use at all we would have taken a completely different approach and been more careful with sanding it or probably restitch it all together but nope we're just gonna do this just put the sole on and then we'll have an actual stitch going through the sole that holds it in place properly not uh not the way they did it from the factory so i'm gonna let this cure for a little while and then when it's time to stitch we'll be back to do that All right, everyone, so as you saw, I'd gone ahead and stitched these up with uh, the Blake stitch machine. We call it a McKay stitch, um, so that's what I'd gone ahead. That means that these boots are now stitched clear through. You can see some of the stitches right there on the inside. So they're not Goodyear Welt style stitch where it's stitched around the edges on the outside of the boot. It goes clear through on the inside right there. Um, you know, long term, it's not exactly the most uh most wanted style of build of boot but unfortunately because these were 
only glued on. This is already a major upgrade having these actually blank stitched. And you saw in the video possibly a little bit that had a little issues with uh, having to manually lift up the foot to readjust the length of the stitch just because this rubber is very grippy. So it kept kind of sliding around on me. But now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and... Sorry, I have to make some noise. I'm going to go ahead and hammer some nails in all around. These are going to be um, clinch nails like this here. These are a steel type uh, just because they're a little more durable than the brass ones. And they're not going to be quite as visible um, underneath the heels. This is the heel that we're putting on, the matching Vibram 700 heel underneath. And so the nails aren't going to corrode or anything where a lot of western boots or if we were to put nails right under the arch area here we would use the brass ones for sure there just because they um they they don't corrode where the steel ones unfortunately do so because this the heel is going to protect these uh, steel nails that's going to do a lot better and it won't corrode with that glue protecting everything as well because these boots here considering how they're constructed and everything this section acts as a midsole so I definitely need something that's really strong in there brass would work fine but I just feel a little more confident in the steel nails holding everything together here over the brass ones so we're gonna go ahead and get all that nailed around and glued um, I didn't really show it in the video but as you can tell, I did trim out the edges here a little bit and then um, sanded that out. Sanded out the heels as well just because these don't come pre-sanded. I did have to adjust them as well a little bit, uh, sanding them down and making sure that everything's fitted nicely on these boots. So once it's time to glue them, I'll put them together, let them cure overnight, and then we'll continue on. So I'll see you back here in just a little bit. All right, everyone. So we've got the heels on. I've done some rough sanding around the edges already. And at this point, uh, because keep in mind, these are a rubber uh, sole and heel, as well as it's the cork filled ones. You can see those little spots of cork all around right there, little light colors. Um, I can't run nails in from the inside into these. Otherwise, it's really going to damage and crush this entire heel block on it. Uh, so we don't want to run heavy nails into these unfortunately but what we do have is our auto solar some people call it cone nose because it's got a little cone under here i'll show you guys what that looks like here in a little bit um but we're going to run some wire nail through it this little piece right here is going to make these wire nails turn into a hook on the inside of the boot it's going to shoot them in and uh, really secure everything i don't really like using wire nail too much but it really comes in handy for a number of different uses and purposes and this is definitely one of them that it's the best use for it. So let's go ahead and do this. All right, so we've got the wire nails. You can see they're little, little small dots like that. And uh, what happens is, so there's different attachments I have this one here um, that slides in underneath. This one tends to work a little bit better for your dressier heels and stuff like that. So this is like a stopper for it uh, so that it doesn't go in as deep where when I take it off, it goes in much deeper and you can see these little indentations. So because it turned into a hook and everything on the inside, it leaves that indentation, which is actually a good thing. Uh, appearance wise, it might not be the most beautiful thing in the world, obviously, but structurally it's much better. Eventually everything will kind of shift into place after a couple of wears and you won't have these indentations nearly as much, but that's the way it has to be, unfortunately, with this kind of structural design. Some of the Vibram heels, like the Vibram 430, for example, they have washer heels, so they've got holes already in it. So we hammer nails into it uh, by hand. Same thing with the day-night heels. But when it comes to these guys, unfortunately, we have to do a wire nail just because there's nowhere else for us to be able to put the nails into. And if we put it on the inside, it's going to be a big, big mess, in other words. And I've got some dirt on my hands already this machine actually here is kind of new where i have another one like it similar it's just a little bit different and i have to kind of break this one in with oils and stuff and so i grabbed a spot that i just oiled up recently and got some nastiness on my fingers but anyways that's what it looks like there here's one that hasn't been done quite yet so i'm going to go ahead and go through all of them get the wire nails in and uh, continue on let me 
grab the camera real quick so I can show you guys what it looks like. So what I was trying to show was the machine itself. So this is the wire up here. I'm trying to avoid showing off shoes with information on it. But this is the wire here. These rolls of wire are not cheap. They're a few hundred bucks in some cases, depending on the type of wire. Um, so it feeds down in there, goes down through this area here you can see a portion of that wire right there sticking out it kind of helps uh, with that little window there as a guide when you're feeding a new wire in there sometimes we have to take off this whole face plate right here and then comes down here and there's that nose cone that i was talking about so when you put a put the guide on here it covers up that nose cone makes it nice and flat remove the guide and it has that nose cone shape You've got other types of guides and stuff that fall into position as well. You've got what are called stoppers. If this one unlocks here, there it goes. Stoppers here, and this has got nothing on it. So when we adjust the length of the wire to zero, so no wire at all, and put the stopper on, we could actually use this as a mini hammer because it just do, 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 it just hits. Let me, let me do this real quick. I'll show you guys what it looks like. So. That's what it looks like when it hammers right there. So I put the length of the the uh, nails down to zero. Let's put it back to, let's say number eight and a half for now. Put that away and I'll show you guys what the nail looks like or the wire. There you go. That's the wire right there. Thought I'd show you guys off one of these machines that's kind of underappreciated in the cobbler industry especially with the YouTube community of cobblers and I thought I'd show that off what it looks like as you can tell it's pretty dirty again this one's kind of the newer one here to the shop I have this one here this one has the face plate off so it kind of gives you a visual of what's going on here this one is missing the cutting knives in here but uh, yeah, we're probably not even going to really mess with this particular machine here too much. Might just clean it up and put it up for display or see what we'll do with it. But there you go. So let's continue on. All right, everyone, so basically almost done. As you can see, we've gone ahead and made this edging here on the darker side. Obviously, we're not putting a thick wax coat or anything on these because they're supposed to be a little bit semi-transparent there, especially on the brown one. You can see it a little bit better. So it's got a little bit of a shimmer to it, but you can still at least see a little, little bit of those specks of cork in there and everything. I'd gone ahead and uh, put some new insoles in there. If you can see it, those are the taco insoles. Um, come in packets kind of like that right there but the insoles that he originally had in there these things are just they're shot they're like really done for all around they're there's just no way these can go back into the shoes anymore or the boots so they're going in the trash unfortunately these little taco insoles they've got a little bit of a cushion on them they're leather so they're definitely a great thing to have around because they come in handy to replace insoles and also if you ever need them to they'll come in handy if you have a couple of them in stock i don't have them quite yet listed on our website but if you're wanting a pair or something I could definitely get those to you just uh shoot me a message on either facebook or instagram otherwise at this point i'm just going to condition up these boots do some little final touches here and there get them all buffed up and shined they're not supposed to be too shiny but at least conditioned and everything and they're ready to go so if you have any questions or comments leave them down below shorter questions preferably any long detailed questions please send us a message again through facebook or instagram it's uh, cobblers plus co on instagram cobblers plus on facebook and so yeah if you enjoyed it make sure to give a thumbs up and maybe we'll do another johnson murphy video down the road because these are the italian models well models made in italy in particular 
had another pair in here earlier that was made in India, which were actually Goodyear welted, surprisingly. So, might be able to see one of those down the road. So be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell icon so that you're notified when we have our next video up. And if you want to see a pair that's made either in India, China, or wherever it may have come from, you'll be notified for that. So 